Well, hello. Today we're doing Trapunto on this Hunter Star quilt. Gail Wallace joins us to show how to turn everyday garments into quilting showcases. And then I show you that if you can draw it, you can quilt it. So stay tuned. Linda's Long Arm Quilting is aired free to you by Gamel Quilting Systems Vision 2. Innovation taken to the next level. My stitch, my vision, my Gamel. Before we get started on our Hunter Star Quilt or our drawing practice, take a look at these great techniques for quilting garments and doing trapunto. Welcome, Gail. Thank you for inviting me, Linda. It's, I'm just so thrilled to have you here and to share everything that you have to show us today. But first, let's tell the viewers a little bit about you. How long have you been sewing? I started sewing when I was about five and I was designing well, doll clothes and using hand sewing with just needle and thread. Wow. So you've been sewing a long time now. When did the quilting come into that? Well, I sewed for the public for 20 years and then I took a wild uh, guess and, and went to a quilt show and saw some gorgeous quilts and wound up taking classes at a local quilt shop and that got me started. And the sewing kind of went by the wayside. By the wayside. By the wayside. So have you, did you do things by hand, or you've been doing this for a while then? Uh, I've been long arm quilting for about 14 years, and, and I started quilting in 1985. And um, after having about 65 quilt tops from teaching classes, I decided I actually needed to get some of them finished. Of course, 14 years later, I still have probably 60 <laughs> quilt tops to do of my own. Yes, that's kind of a phenomenon for long arm quilters. We never have enough time no. to do our own work. Well, your, your quilts are gorgeous and your garments. And, Thank you. Um, let's take a look at uh, the, this one garment in particular that you've just recently won a major award on. I am just enamored by this outfit. Um, the trapunto on it in particular is very, very well done. And I understand that you can show us your technique that you've developed to do this. Um, when I'm doing trapunto on most of my garments, there's such small areas to do. Uh, a lot of the long arm quilters are doing the fa trapunto. But my designs are fairly small and they have very small areas, so it's hard to trim away the batting. So I draw my design for my garment mm -hmm. on um, fairly loose woven material. And I either use a permanent marker on a light fabric, or if it's a, a darker garment, I use um, a white pen. Okay. And then I layer this on the regular fashion fabric, which this oh, is silk. Oh, this is silk. These this fabrics silk. are gorgeous. And is this, that what the red outfit is out of a silk? It's a Dupioni oh. silk. Oh, it's beautiful. This is the back side of this vest, mm -hmm. and you can see the little tufts of, of cotton. Mm -hmm. That's actually poly, poly down. Okay. It's nice and soft. And on the teeny weeny areas right here, I mm -hmm. use a... Um, Boy, those are tiny too. They're, they're just like a little line, not maybe an eighth of an inch across. I wondered how you did that stuffing. <laughs> it's uh, actually a darning needle and a double strand of... Um, synthetic yarn and you can just go down in those little bitsy areas. Okay, so this is on the the lining. The lining side. Okay. So you don't have to worry about uh, threads hanging around because mm -hmm. they're going to be covered up with uh, lining material later okay. on. And the little bitty things are the yarn and then the larger areas. I use, actually at home, I use um, chopstick. But okay. You, with the wood you almost have to just twizzle it, uh -huh. and it wraps the batting around the... Oh, I see. And it stuffs it and in there. And then you can stuff it in there. So you, you cut a little hole in the lining. Yep. Being careful not to cut all the way through, of course. Yes. But this is less dangerous than, um, than trimming it. 
Yes, and that's the one thing if you're doing a, uh, an item that has larger areas mm -hmm. and you're trimming, this is sewn to the lining of the, of the vest or jacket. Okay. And if you do happen to uh, make a little snip in it, it's not going to be deadly. Okay. Because you haven't snipped the outside of the fabric. And now, where, you sni where you've done this on this side, you've done it on the lining, mm -hmm. um, then do you sew from the lining side? Yes. Oh, okay. You've got all your lines drawn. I draw all my cross hatching or diagonal lines. So they're very, very accurate. Very accurate. Okay. And this is the one I use the white pin on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I try and add s some extra around it because you never know uh, when you get through uh, doing the turpunto work on it. It you, shrinks. It shrinks. Mm -hmm. And depending on how tight it is, it can shrink up to an inch. Wow. That could make a big difference big in difference. the size of a jacket or a big, vest. Big, big difference. So then do you lay your pattern back on and, and yes. kind of retrace around that? After I get it all, uh, all the trapunto done, I lay it out on, I have a big pressing table and I pin it so it's nice and flat mm -hmm. and I steam it real good and let it sit and then I lay my pattern back on it to... Uh, so steam it from this side, of course, because the silk it, would be... Steam it very well and let it dry. And that gets rid of a lot of the puffiness. And if you've stuffed it very, very full, you can go back and add more lines to it, cross hatching mm -hmm. or uh, lines in between. But then I, I like to add beads. Oh, you do beading too. I love beads. And these are added after I get the quilting part done and they're all uh, pressed and neat and tidy. Then I add beads, and they have special beading thread, uh -huh. and I do the ye old quilter's knot. Okay. And just stitch from the wrong side. And the beading is very easy. It doesn't require a whole lot of training, and it's almost like just doing a small running stitch. From underneath. Just catch a bead. Do you have to use different needles for different sizes or? These, I mean, these needles are actually um, applique needles or straw needles. They're okay. very long and thin. Okay. And I just do a little running stitch and add the bead and to add it. Add the bead to it. You were showing me earlier um, how you test for the different kinds of thread. Let's I look at just, that sample. I just figured this one out. <laughs> Uh, you can pull threads out for different things uh -huh. and you never know. You can lay them on a piece of fabric and they'll look great on the fabric. And then once they're stitched in, they don't They look, look different. They look totally different. So you really have to do a test and, how, and tell us how you did this. I test drive threads now. Um, what I do, I had uh, probably four or five different threads mm -hmm. and I'll wind maybe two or three feet of one thread on, I'll tie a knot, and then the onto next onto the bobbin. Onto the bobbin. Onto the bobbin because these are going to be on the All bobbin from the side. bottom side. But I do little short pieces so I can just keep going and, mm -hmm. and test drive all of them. You can see... Because that knot will come right through on the bobbin side without any trouble. Almost. With the rayons, they're so thin mm -hmm. that the knot goes right on through the bobbin case. And I, I haven't had any problem with that. But that saves filling a bunch uh, of bobbins mm -hmm. and changing bobbins out. What a great tip. What a great tip for that. And um, on this beautiful purple top that you've done, I noticed that you didn't, it's not heavy because you didn't use any batting. So it's okay to put your garment on the long arm machine without any batting, just doing all of that stitching. I do that. Uh, I've quilted some lining for some of my garments. Mm -hmm. And the thing I have found out, because it does draw up, if you load your fabric so the salvages are pinned to the leaders, uh -huh. because you have more stretch that way, Okay. you can stretch it a little tighter, and then when it relaxes, it doesn't pucker the fabric. Okay, so pin from salvage to salvage. Salvage. What and, a, and another that, great tip. It, it has just enough give that when it re relaxes, it doesn't pucker it all mm -hmm. up. Now, on the jackets, um, the final bat, do you use, a, you use a final batting in these, or do no, you just do I've, the lining only? I've, I've just added the cotton on the inside and it gives it enough body. So you don't, don't have to use a batting so they wouldn't be so heavy. Right. 
That's nice. I've seen too many garments that you know look like armor instead <laughs> of uh, something that you could wear and be comfortable in. Right. So this and that would work well for um, you know your skirt too if you mm -hmm. were when you make a, a whole ensemble. One of my skirts, I did do some quilting on the bottom edge mm -hmm. of it and mm -hmm. did some a, a small amount of trapunto. I didn't want to do it too much. And then I added the beads to it. And your finish work inside the jackets and um, are, is just gorgeous. I mean, Thank you. of course, it's just so expert. And we just appreciate you coming today and sharing these these secrets with us. Thank you. With your uh, award-winning things. Um, and let's just go ahead and have a little fashion show now. This uh, vest is from a commercial pattern, and it has princess lines in it. And I added uh, the free. Uh, freehand quilting, which I did on a single layer of fabric, and uh, it has a variegated uh, thread, cotton thread, that I quilted yardage for this uh, vest. It's quilted in the front and in the back. It has more freehand quilting. I thought it added a, a little bit extra to a regular commercial pattern. The collar and the cuffs on this jacket were freehand quilted with a bright chartreuse green thread and it was uh, quilted from the back side of the fabric with the green thread in the bobbin and the back of it has just a little bit on the collar. This uh, jacket was from a commercial pattern and it was actually supposed to be a stained glass pattern with uh, separations between the, the uh, different fabrics, but I thought it would look great as a stitch sampler. I used quite a few different variegated threads. I did both fronts at the same time, but I quilted them from the back side. I drew off a grid and all the threads were in the bobbins. After I finished quilting it all, I added the um, suede sashing between them just stitched to the top. The fabric is a uh, black ray, rayon wool that I was fortunate enough to find. It drapes well and it feels good to wear. Lots of beading was added after the garment was uh, quilted. This is uh, a, a commercial pattern uh, adapted from a commercial pattern. It is uh, Thai silk. All the trapunto was done by hand from a pattern out of a book that I enlarged. Uh, it's called Greenbrier, which is actually a thistle or a weed, the design. I added a lot of cross-hatching to accent the trapunto work. Beading was added after the uh, pieces were quilted and stuffed. It has the design down both sleeves across the front and uh, diagonally across the back. The back is uh, the same design as the front and it was all quilted from the back side with the design drawn on uh, black poly cotton, uh, fairly loosely woven fabric so I can get the needle uh, through the fabric to stuff it. I learned my lesson on a, a previous jacket that you do not use light colored material to uh, quilt a darker jacket. I've been teaching more than 20 years, and I believe that my left-handed students have had to conform to the right-handed world when it comes to long-arm quilting. Stop! Not anymore! Now with the new Gamel Vision 2, left-handed quilters can easily customize the quilting machine to their own comfort and needs. My stitch, my vision, my gamble.